Hello. So this is Janet Street Porter. She used to be a television personality and now she's become more of a media pundit. She is not a scientist and yet she gives her opinions as if she were. Mind you, a lot of those people in uh, the uh, government organisation called SAGE uh, aren't scientists either. So, uh, yeah, it's like fortune telling at the moment, isn't it? Now, let's just see what she says. And you can tell she's on the left from the outset even if you, you hadn't come across her before. Janet Street Porter, call me a killjoy. Well, yes, I do. You're a killjoy. But we must shut down city pubs if selfish young drinkers can't keep their distance and ruin it for the rest of us by prolonging this COVID misery. Let's just unpick that, should we? Selfish young drinkers. No. She's talking about young people. Young people are always selfish, or as seen by older people, aren't they? And just look at them. They're trying to live their lives, dear. And she says here, ruining it for the rest of us. No, just ruining it for you, Janet Street Porter, because you're over 60. Well, you've had your fun. Now let them have some. You stay home. They're all right. Uh, it's true that some of them will be sick, but not many of them. And yes, there might be some deaths, but again, not many. And this, I'm just going into the next one. Of course, that's tragic for each individual case. I'm not saying it isn't. But we have to remember this. We cannot get rid of COVID. We could shut down the whole country for the next six months unless we can hermet hermetically seal the borders and keep everyone home. We will not get rid of COVID. You can't do that. So there, there's no prolonging it. This will go on as long as we don't have a working vaccine. Pubs are where you meet people. And it's well documented that at least 90% of all relationships start by getting drunk. Oh, for God's sake, that's a load of nonsense. Usually where alcohol is readily available in unlimited amounts. Well, as a matter of fact, I met my husband while I was queuing up for the canteen at lunchtime in the university. We were both in the queue university canteens. It went on, the queue was so long, we met each other, got married, and I'd had three children before I got to the, uh, to the fish counter. Okay, that's another story. Uh, was it a smart move by Boris Johnson to reopen pubs and bars as the weather warmed up? Oh, yes, it has warmed up. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm really sweating here now. And the holiday season, at least what used to be the holiday season, kicked off. It was a sop to keep us happy, but at what cost? Well, what was the cost of the people being locked up all those months, Janet Street Porter? Quite a high cost, a high cost in health because people weren't going to get routine medical examinations, a high cost in, in the economy because businesses are failing all over the place. So what, it was a sop to keep us happy. No, it was a necessary strategy to keep the country going. Now there's this uh, advisory body called SAGE. What's it called? A special something or other uh, for emergencies. Oh, I can't, um, hang on a minute. Fine, sage. Oh dear, that's my S. Yeah. Oh, here we are. Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies. Okay. Uh, it's, yeah, he might as well have gone to the temple and had the priests cut entrails out of sheep for all the good they did. At least when they when this whole thing started, apparently Sage were telling Boris Johnson not to lock down. 
and Cummings, you know, bad boy Cummings, the guy who took his family to his parents' farm to, uh, to observe lockdown while he was ill. Cummings was thumping the table, telling them they had to lock down. And when finally they did, now somebody in SAGE is, is fulminating that they should have locked down earlier and people have died because they didn't. They were the ones who wouldn't do it, who wouldn't advise it to be done. Anyway, uh, so... Uh, this week, one of the government's scientific advisors described the official testing and tracing system as clunky and slow. I can well believe that. Um, and yet, Boris has pinned all his hopes on testing as the key way to allow us some fun to return to work and get the kids back into school. A combination of inadequate testing and readily available booze is a toxic mix. No, it isn't. Uh, but the government, uh, because you see, this is what she's really bothered about. The fact that young people are going out and enjoying themselves. Oh, and it's because we're under the thumb of the liquor industry. Oh, yeah, there you are. Any secondary school teacher could have told them that placing teenagers under house arrest uh, could only end one way. The moment restrictions were eased, the young would congregate in large numbers to celebrate. So she's admitting this herself. And, uh, and then she says here, now we're seeing the results. In Scotland, there's been a huge spike in new COVID cases. 64 and rising. Well, 64 is not a huge spike. It's only a huge spike if people are dying, and she's not saying that. And even so, uh, treatment is getting better, quicker, and more effective. So Nicola Sturgeon imposed a lockdown from 5 p.m. last Wednesday. Well, you see, but Nicola Sturgeon is a, um, is a dictator. So is this a pattern that will be repeated? Yes, there will have to be local lockdowns, probably. But it's not young people being selfish. And here she says, is Nicola Sturgeon guilty of overreacting, given that Scotland has now gone 20 days without anyone dying who's tested positive? And there you are. So of those 65, how many were old people or older people who were not taking proper precautions? Sadly, there's a small minority. Most of us only lose our inhibitions and our virginity. And I, I don't know, she, she's obsessed. She's absolutely obsessed. I didn't meet my husband at some binge in, in, in a pub on a Friday night, and actually I don't know anyone who did. Now, I have a proposal to make. We have a lot of youth unemployment, and we have a lot of older people who can't actually, who shouldn't be out and about too much because, until there's some sort of proper protection against COVID, which, you know, even with a vaccine might not be enough. Why aren't we thinking in terms of drafting in the younger people to do the jobs, having older people nurse them through the beginnings and then retire? You see, it used to be that older people died rather earlier than they do now, and they often left work rather earlier than they do now. Both of my grand grandfathers died in their in their 60s and uh, you know just undiagnosed illnesses uh, because it, uh, people just didn't bother going to the doctor that much the working class men never went to the doctor uh, you know that was a really sissy thing to do so it was it was always the case that there were always younger people coming up. Now we're keeping younger people in a state of extended infantilism because we're trying to keep them out of the workforce because the older people are taking up the space. 
No, what we should be doing is thinking of not sending these kids to university to have their heads filled with all sorts of Marxist rubbish that doesn't do them any good and which they puts them in debt for years anyway, and having older people pull out of the workforce and telling older people that they should exercise more of their own isolation so that we don't ruin it for the kids who are the next generation and the future. Oh, oh, she, she's here. In spite of the risks, I would not close rural pubs. How very big of her. But she's come up with all these rules. Tag all drinkers outside and so you know who they are. And to have them produce ideas. This is very typically left, isn't it? And it's bad and it's sort of selfish thing that a lefty would say. Just tell them to get stuffed. Why don't you treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of promotional merchandising? The Granny Opteryx t-shirt or the Granbo mug, which comes in two flavours, with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. And whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share share.